Hello folks. Come on in. Let's huddle up and talk about a few sporting events uh, and news uh, in recent days that I'd like to share with you. I've been excited certainly as a lot of you baseball fans have had to be with Roy Halladay's pitching effort last night for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, pitching a no-hitter against anyone, anytime is most difficult. And pitching a no-hitter in postseason playoffs is so difficult it hasn't been done since Don Larson's Yankee victory in 1956, which I happened to be watching at that time, yes. Uh, it brings back some wonderful memories. Well, what Roy Halladay did for us last night, we fans, right? We watched this spectacle with such uh, appreciation, appreciation. I was looking at those fans in Philadelphia last night, and they were just on the edge of their seat, afraid to move, boy, from that sixth inning on because of the old superstition kind of thing we have as ball players and fans. When your pitcher's doing well, let's not change anything. We don't want to move. Don't even go to the bathroom. I'm going to stay right here till it's over. Well, I had goosebumps watching that ninth inning and that last out and what a great play the catcher made. And I know you folks enjoyed it uh, as much as I did and those memories will stay with us. Thank you, Roy Halliday. Now, speaking of memories, this is football season. Of course, the news has been big about the trade that New England made with the Minnesota Vikings and Randy Moss going to the Vikings this week. Well, of course, uh, these memories I have of Randy Moss are he making a catch in the end zone against the Jets uh, a few weeks ago. And... Uh, it just so happens the Jets are going to face Randy Moss again this coming Monday night, but in a different uniform, huh? Well, he will be a threat. We'll talk more about Randy and uh, his direct threat on the Jets' defense before the Monday night game. But uh, I had to chuckle a bit thinking of Bill Belichick and uh, his gamesmanship, you might say. Now the man knows what's best for his team. We all, you have to believe that after what we've seen over the years. His timing and pulling the trigger on a decision uh, with Randy Moss seems to be very good. Uh, you know as a Jet fan, I'd have liked to have seen it happen a couple of weeks from now. But uh, coming in there uh, Monday night with Moss uh, has lifted that whole Viking team, man. You know they're enthusiastic. They were fired up to have Randy finally get into the locker room. But uh, I just, again, have to chuckle at Bill Belichick's uh, gamesmanship. He threw a crowbar right in the Jets' game planning uh, for this coming week, and, well, We'll see what's ready. The other thing about Bill Belichick and his team is they have a bye this week. So he makes the change. You're going to have a little extra time to prepare what receivers he's going to mix into Randy Moss's spot. New England will be in the hunt toward the end of the season. And uh, you know, I'm talking about New England getting ready with another receiver. It brings to mind uh, a terrible injury this past week, at least for us fans that like watching an elite player perform. And I'm talking about Michael Vick. Michael Vick we've seen over the years, and he's a one-of-a-kind runner, uh, picturesque passer, and we like to watch him play. He's so exciting. The injury he has now, is a problem because it doesn't go away overnight, it doesn't go away in a week, it may not go away for a few weeks or a month. I had that injury, a rib cartilage injury, and uh, for anyone it's, it's near debilitating de depending on the extent of it, how badly it's torn or, or strained. 
my particular rib cartilage injury kept me under wraps in training camp. My last year in football when I was with the Rams, I was working out swimming and playing football. It was a new training program for me, and uh, I ended up pulling a rib cartilage. Well, folks, as a passer, I couldn't pass. I had to wait, spend time until we were sure that thing was healed. And the only way you're sure is whenever you try to throw again full speed. As badly as the Eagles want Vic back in the lineup, they have to make sure, and Vic's the only one that's going to be able to tell them, they have to make sure that Vic feels he's 100%. Just as Daryl Rebus has to let Rex Ryan know, is that hamstring muscle 100%? Well, folks, they don't try 100% unless they're out in the heat of the action, where that adrenaline kicks in and you're reacting and going there. When your mind is on it and you're out there training and stretching and trying to get back in shape, it's not like pulling on that thing full speed ahead. So I'm worried about Michael Vick's injury. I think it's going to take a, a little bit longer than a, a week or two, unless you can inject it with something that simply uh, makes the pain go away for a while. You can't last a season that way. Now, nah, they're going to have to get this thing healed, so I think we're going to see a lot more quarterbacking from Cobb. I'd be surprised at anything else. All right, folks, there's a lot going on out there, and I want to talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide going up there to see Steve Spurrier's game, Cox, come Saturday. I'll get back to you about the Tide tomorrow. Until then, y'all take care, and uh, ready? Break.